Good evening and welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin and this is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin playing Sebastian Crow, the half elf shadow sorcerer, and we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman playing Wrath, the Asimar warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything D&D, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. So if you want even more after the stream, check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube, which come out every Friday. And we also have it available as an audio-only podcast so that you can listen to it on the go as well. And uh, just a bit bit of uh, housekeeping, uh, next week some of the cast are taking a little bit of a vacation, so we will be off next week for those of you that are that are watching, uh, that are following the live streams. So that means that um, we will be uh, just skipping one week and then we'll be back to our usual, usual gaming. Um, so uh, n not next week, but the week after. With that, though, let us find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back to the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had just struck up a bargain with the Queen of Thieves, aka Katarina von Kessel, to help her infiltrate the Enigma Ziggurat, one of the great strongholds of the Amethyst Academy in the wondrous city of Liberio, the independent city-state that lies at the center point between the three great nations of Caspia, Illyria, and Westamar. The Queen of Thieves has st said that she wishes to have a personal meet, uh, a one-on-one -on -one sort of in-person meeting with the Archmage Alabaster, one of the eight directors of the Amethyst Academy and Wrath's father. <laughs> My dad! <laughs> in exchange for ar arranging this meeting, Katarina will give back the Scepter of St. Vitruvia, which our heroes are after. Thus, Wilhelm, uh, now, well, well, Wilhelm, Pluto, and uh, um, Veo are still off in the distance negotiating things. We'll be coming back to them. Um, we are now with Sebastian, Rudy, and Rath as they stand upon the Pont Grand, which is the a great... Um, bridge that spans one of the largest canals in Liberio. Across this bridge, built up on both sides, are um, several um, multi-level shops that each themselves with their own balconies that overhang, made of uh, kind of this, this limestone washed stone with red terracotta rooftops. There is all manner of hustle and bustle as merchants, musicians, street performers, um, and uh, city folk go about their business along the Pont Grand, selling all manner of uh, goods, gems, um, everything from, from coin and gems are flowing. There's also gelato, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, the, the smells of freshly baked bread and cheese in the air, um, and the, the, the 
a sloshing of the water as all the boats move up and down the canals of Laveria. Standing before you uh, is the Queen of Thieves, but she is not in her typical garb that you've encountered her in before. In fact, she is taking an appearance that, uh, Sebastian, you find very familiar. Um, it's possible even uh, there's... there. It, it, it's hard even, Sebastian, for you to look at this as a disguise of any kind, because the the person that you see before you is just Katarina von Kessel. She is a athletic woman in her mid twenties, uh, with auburn hair and wide eyes, and um, you can tell that um, she is making a little bit more of an effort to uh, look like an. Uh, a nerdy academy mage um, rather than um, sort of um, dressing up her appearance. She has just donned a purple jacket with the academy robe. She's wearing her four academy rings um, and is otherwise lacking any sort of obvious disguise. Yes, she is obviously uh, to, to anyone who wouldn't know any better. Um, and in fact, if you didn't even know that it was her, she just looks like a mem any member of the Amethyst Academy that would that you would encounter quite commonly in Liberia. In fact, even while you've been in Liberia, you have noticed that there are purple-robed mages moving through the city very openly, doing their uh, going on their business. They seem to be a relatively common sight. They they stick out because of the purple robes, obviously, and and you and those sort of accoutrements, but. Um, in a lot of ways, the garb that she's adopted is kind of like, uh, uh, just blends right in with the sights of sounds of, of Liberio, uh, in a way that her, her typical getup would, uh, would as well, uh, but, um, but in a different manner of, of, of speaking. Um, she smiles, um, and, uh, and finishes asking the question, so... How exactly are we going to get up to the Enigma Ziggurat? Well, um, I just so happen to have this book of handy uh, codes for the summoning circles, or the um, teleportation circles, for all of the Academy Towers, uh, oh. written by you. And um, we're going to be using that and a teleportation circle spell that I have stored in my ring to hop on up there. All right. That that sounds fine. I kind of imagined uh, um, flying up there myself. It seemed kind of fun, but if we're just going to de teleport right up there, so be it. Do you know the fly spell, and do you want to cast it on all of us? Because otherwise, I'm not using a spell <laughs> slot, and I don't know how to make people fly, and... Uh, Rath, what about you? <laughs> I possess the knowledge to make us fly. However, I... Can I? I... Cannot make us all fly. I mean, don't use the resources if you don't have to. I... I lack the capacity. Either three of us fly gracefully or four of us do that like weird floaty thing where like you can't really get off the ground you're just sort of like <laughs> on the moon it's like it's like too spread out i i could turn into a giant eagle but also that uses a lot more power than i than using my ring does and we might need all the power we have at our disposal um well, Sebastian, I mean, if you use it out of your ring, we can get home, right? Uh, Rath, you still have one in your ring, yes? Yes, the, uh, uh, I have not used it. The teleportation circle still exists. I did not finish the casting when we were interrupted. Right. Well, then Very we well. still have a way home. Very well. Um, have you ever used have you ever arrived at an academy stronghold via teleportation before it's quite an experience uh not this one and actually i have some 
issues that I'm going to have to take up with the Academy director. Because as far as I knew, I mean, last time I checked, I was a high-ranking member of the Academy with seven rings. Uh, the fact that we've been told that going into an Academy stronghold is going to equal death, uh, even for a high-ranking Academy member, uh, I take issue with that, and I'm concerned. Well, it we'll just have to see what happens. I've heard a lot of tales about the Enigma Ziggurat. It's a very, very large place, and like the other strongholds that the Academy appropriated from the Sorcerer Kings, not even the Academy members themselves know a, everything that has every chamber that is within these buildings. There's a lot of secrets that they hold that, well, the Academy still still doesn't know them all. That's kind of exciting to me, actually. Maybe we'll find something that the the, the other mages don't know about. That'd be quite fascinating. The Sorcerer Kings had many, many secrets, you know. The apparently the Enigma Ziggurat was made by Orion the Third. It was meant to be the shipyard where he built the Arcane Fleet. They were spell ships that shot fireballs. Very, very interesting. Apparently, Orion wanted to conquer the far continents on the other side of the ocean with his spell fleets, uh, but uh, was more ended up spending most of his reign being more preoccupied with um, summoning succubi. Take for what that way you will. Uh, you clearly paid a lot more attention in history class than I did. Uh, yes, absolutely. Well, this is intriguing. Would you know what these ships may look like if you saw one? The spell ships of the Sorcerer Kings. Well, <laughs> those spell ships that Orion the Third made. Most of them now are all wrecked across the uh, the the Isles of Sky. Um, they were all destroyed in a great storm when. A later sorcerer queen tried to invade. Quite a shame. I th I, from what I understand, they're quite miraculous ve vessels, but none survive anymore. But if they did have some left somewhere in the in the ziggurat, imagine what we could do. I mean, I can cast fireballs, but imagine a ship that can do it for us. That's pretty awesome. Sounds we like trouble a, to me. <laughs> we encountered a rat once that made a submarine. Mm. Uh, I don't know if this is on the same plane of uh, of wowness, but it was uh, quite impressive. Um, the the rats are building submarines. Yes, it traveled a great distance. Um, you remember, Rudy? Yes, we got we had its plans at some point. Did Wilhelm have those, or did you? I do not remember. I I do not know if I left them. Anyways, that, that's I really think... concerning. <laughs> yeah, that's they really were concerning. Just quite smart rats. It Actually, was... that is very concerning. But uh, we have pressing things ahead of us. One, I hope, <laughs> fingers crossed, that these rings uh, will still work. Rudy, you're not technically an Academy member, so I just want to warn you that. There is a possibility that if we do teleport into the Enigma's Igarot, you might be instantly disintegrated. That's a risk I'm willing to take, but it's just worth noting that the Academy does have certain security me measures in place to prevent non-Academy members from teleporting inside. So what you're saying is I might just not exist after I go through this. Uh, quick I question. I do not remember, but this makes sense. I've never traveled without an Academy member. Is, are the, I, I mean, I should know this, but are the security systems in the Enigma Ziggurat magical in nature? Can they magically tell who an Academy member is? Or could we disguise Rudy as an Academy, uh, a newcomer to the and Academy? And I mean, I have worked with the Academy. I am under contract in a sense, so. It's true. 
Yes, but you don't wear Academy rings, do you? And that is the... Not. And the Academy rings are the keystone of all of the Academy's magical def defenses. They're what allow you to even get inside Paradox Castle. They're what allow you to get inside the Inscrutable Tower. The doors of the Academy Strongholds don't open for those who aren't wearing Academy rings. Surely when the Academy first brings in children, we can just... I guess Rudy's not a child, no. My my logic's flawed here. And I can't just borrow one of y'all's rings. You, Sebastian, you said you had seven. Yes, I... I I, they're they're only t attuned to me. Is there? A, um, do I have a? Uh, or let me think. Have we murdered any academy? <laughs> I'll I'll members? just say I just don't know. I've never been. I have not ever traveled to the Enigma Ziggurat, even uh, via teleportation. Well, since I left the since before I left the academy, I know that in the case of the. The Enigma Ziggurat is not somewhere where the Academy brings students. So, whatever their de defenses are on the inside, I don't know. It's possible that they, that it, it, from what I r recall, Paradox Castle, Castle and the Inscrutable Tower, they were guarded by golems that would simply start attacking any non-academy members. It's possible they use a similar thing in the, the Enigma Ziggurat as well. It's possible they use some sort of spell trap. If that's a risk that you'd like to take, hopefully if it is some sort of guardian, then at least that will give us an opportunity to explain ourselves. Guardians we can deal with. Um, and Rath, uh, in our brief chats about your conversation with your dad, uh, you should have some siblings up there. Yes, I... How many, how many siblings do you have? I was under the impression that I had sibling, uh, as in the non-plural. Um, I do not know what my father is insinuating. He has... He is a mighty crafter. Maybe he has uh, considered his creations part of his part of my siblings although that is it explains a lot i do not have look he is a very busy person and i do not try to trouble him with affairs it was hard enough to get the uh the meeting with him you make it sound like you're just one of his inventions or creations technically yes um you see um when a man I, I start I poking Wrath's face, and I'm like, are you, like, are you living tissue, or is this, like, are, are you a construct? Ow. Uh, nah, he's real. I've seen him get beat up plenty of times. Just, I bleed. Yes. I bleed hmm. blood. And uh, I am, although I am one of my father's creations, I consider myself unique. Because it is Bruce who is the one who I follow. I do right. not follow him for guidance. I follow Bruce. And Bruce has unlocked so many doors and windows. There is a vast unknown. My power is but a glimpse of what Bruce has to offer. Your uh, cat gives you powers? Oh, yes. He is not a cat. If you see a cat, your eyes deceive you. This is but a, 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 a morsel of his power that is shown in our world. Wrath, why, why are you explaining this to her? Don't, don't tell her about Bruce. Everyone must know the power of Bruce. He must be respected and cuddled. Hmm, this Bruce. It's some sort of entity from another dimension it's actually just a cat and uh moving on i think just, that it's about time that we teleport into the a cat wrath yeah. it's just a cat um wrath and i stomp on wrath's foot and i'm like <laughs> it's just a cat um i do not understand your line of questioning and why are you stomping on my foot you can clearly see i am standing here 
<laughs> Sebastian, don't be rude. He's just trying to tell you about his cat. I would gladly hear all about his cat. It is important cat. to distinguish he is not just a cat. He is a an entity does not even begin to describe hmm. what Bruce is. He is vast knowledge. He is unparalleled wisdom and, and oh so cute reckoning look at his face <laughs> and he Such loves to be guy. and how is it that you came came by this bruce he has always been yeah, certainly but i'm interested in knowing how you found this creature there are times when i forget how what it was like before him but hmm. there was a dark time in my life and bruce showed me the way he came to me i did not find bruce bruce found me he reached out through the cosmos and he he offered his love and his guidance and i am but a humble servant to the great and awe that is that is he and he has shown me so much i have seen i've started to see through the keyhole do you know what lies on the other side of the door i have seen things that would change your world tell me all about it <laughs> well i mean you can tell her all about it after we uh, see your father right Raph? he we shouldn't be kept waiting i you he is a busy man. Busy we must man. table this discussion Very for later. Busy. You you are right. You we do have pressing matters. You are mm. bound to this creature though. Yes? No. You've made a pact with it. No. It As is you would with any animal when you feed them, right? There is right, nothing Sebastian? that I would not do uh, right. without this creature. Wrath, you just uh, tell me oh man, what else do you know how to talk about? Can we just change the subject quickly? Uh <laughs> Rudy, before we teleport up there, Bruce. Well, I could go on uh, for ages. He is. Hey, so, here's uh, my crow. His name's Crowley. Wait. He's adorable too. I pledge allegiance to Crowley. Do you want to hear about Crowley? I also have animals, and I hold out. Look at all these of are but animals. Pets. Bruce is my. I am a devotee. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how are we gonna get me up there without uh, disintegrating? Uh, this is a question that we must answer. I suggest we rough up a young uh, <laughs> academy member <laughs> and steal their ring. Although I am, I am concerned about the attunement process. I thought I couldn't have someone else's ring. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. Uh, oh. <laughs> but I think Wrath just wants to beat up other academy members. No, no, stuff. no. It's I just I look for some easy way of infiltrating. We. A, setting off the alarms of the Enigma Ziggurat as soon as we enter the building will not be uh, Is there uh, any way to avoid it though? I mean, <laughs> whether we go through the door or teleport in, I think the alarms are going to go off regardless, aren't they? R Rudy? Y yes, we'll have to explain ourselves once we get there. So we'll need a good story. Rudy, uh -huh. Katarina is just trying to scare you with the disintegration thing. I, I'm I mean, pretty scared. I'm pretty scared. She did listen, a good. You did a good job. Katarina. I went to Paradox Castle. I've been in the Inscrutable Tower. I even went to Starspire Observatory for a brief period of time. None of them had any security systems that involved disintegration. I don't know for sure about the Enigma Ziggurat. But I haven't seen any disintegration in any Academy stronghold so far because uh, most of them, okay, no, one or two of them allow non-Academy members to visit under very strict circumstances. And the Enigma Ziggurat is definitely not one of them, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. You're not really helping me here, Sebastian. I put like a... 52% probability that you won't get disintegrated. The odds are against you, Rudy. If we must decide whether we... It, it is up to you. If You know what? Well, 
Let's do it. And you know what? You too. If I get disintegrated, y'all best be taking care of my family. You know, Academy better be paying for their schooling and education and all that kind of stuff because I won't be able to send them any money back after this. And you better take care of Wilhelm. What's he going to do if, uh, you know, he doesn't have me to set him right and help him with the speeches because he needs a lot of work on that. He does. He does. This is true. Well, right. I'll probably die without you and that's going to suck. That might be pretty scary for him not to have me around. But you know what? Let's let's do it. <laughs> Rudy, when Rath just said that the odds are against you, he clearly didn't hear me say 52%, which actually means the odds are with you. A little bit more than than 50% and still doesn't give you much confidence, but it was your tone and your delivery that made me think that those odds are made up, Sebastian. Um, as we both know. You All right. Have Listen. Zero here. idea of uh the chances. I the point is, Rudy, is we, I do not think we have any clue of what will happen, and it will be up to you to decide if you would like to proceed. Okay, everybody gather round, gather round. Rudy, yeah. I promise you will not get disintegrated. All right, I'll take it. I've been against worse odds, to be honest, and come out <laughs> still with my, my everything, so. I mean, listen, what's the worst that could happen? And then I'm going to um, cast... <laughs> <laughs> um, right before, uh, one moment, I'm going to do something nice. Um, I'm going to turn to the queen of, uh, the queen of thieves. I know you have many questions for Bruce. And so, uh, why don't you give me your information and we can talk about this later. And I'm going to hand her my book of, uh, the, gi the gift of the protectors. So she may write her name, um, in, uh, in my uh, on one of the pages, are you asking for my autograph? <laughs> uh, I am so flattered. I've only heard good things, mixed mixed reviews, um, but mm. I think it's best that I have your information just in case. She writes in a flowing script, Katarina von Kessel. Uh, is and, my name in there? <laughs> yeah. So uh, currently, there are four names. Uh, you haven't crossed Sebastian. mine out, have you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Especially <laughs> under threat of disintegration. Uh, uh, Sebastian, Rudy, uh, Katarina, and Wrath. You crossed Wilhelm's out? Uh, yes, his Wilhelm and uh, Wilhelm's name has been removed um, for now. He is under uh, the care of many soldiers. Oh, that's uh, true. Well, in return, let's, uh, let us, let me repay the favor. I've learned a couple legendary tricks over the years, and so I'll share a little bit of a spell with you all. Well, Katarina von Kessel is in your party. She is normally a legendary creature, her, legendary creature herself. However, while she is in your, your party, you all get to use legendary actions and legendary resistance instead. Oh! Okay, here's the way that it works, though. You each get one use of legendary resistance. Okay? This means that once today, when you fail a saving throw, you can choose to succeed instead. Okay? While Cat is in your party, as a group, each combat encounter, you can, between anyone's turns, each once decide to take an extra action, but that action can only be to make one weapon attack, move your speed, or cast a cantrip. So Cool. So cool. Yeah. So at the end of anyone else's turn, any of you can just say, I want to do do this. And you can do that each once uh, uh, per short rest. Amazing. Right. And that and, and but well, that be, because of that, I won't be playing. I won't be playing the Queen of Thieves with her legendary actions and resistances because she's basically sharing them with you all. Yeah. 
Um, cool. It for so for cantrip, I I assume it would be like weapon attack, where it, it as an example, an eldritch blast would be one eldritch blast, not three. Or, I mean, technically, legendary monsters that can fire eldritch blasts with their cantrips can actually fire all four beams. But yeah, I think uh, um and because cantrips scale up. Yeah, so cantrips are kind of sweet in that respect with legendary actions. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Take yeah. it. Yeah. With that, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I cut you off. I cut you off earlier. No, that's okay. Uh, we're we're refinagling. We're uh, Quentin Tarantinoing the scene, and now now it's back to the Rudy. What's the worst that could happen? And then we teleport. Okay. Into. The- teleportation circle opens up and you see before you the shimmering uh, the shimmering portal. Will you each step through? I step through. Sh- shove Houdini okay. in my hood. And then... Who's going first? All right, I'll step through. Okay. Uh, with Bruce in, uh, in tow. Cat goes next. Rudy, uh, do you... I'll, I'll go. <laughs> Just so I'm not left... Behind, okay. and I walk in. And I go after Rudy. All right. Rudy, please give me an intelligence saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'd have to use my... Oh, I don't know if I can <laughs> use it now. 12. Okay. Um, as you... you... legendary resistance. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, you failed. Oh no. Um, as you step through the portal Can I use it? <laughs> and you open your eyes, you appear to be in hell. Oh. Um, you oh, see again. before you a field of her- of horror as you are within a s- landscape of of fire, bone, and pulsing blood and organs. Screams echo all around you as thousands of demons fly and circle around you, swatting and swiping at you. You take 25 points of damage. Um, and, um, and as you, you, you shake and shudder, um, and, at, at, at this at the site be, be before you what are you going to do um <laughs> just like oh my gosh i hope they're gonna take care of my kids i died for sure <laughs> i was disintegrated um god can i start to run away can i try to run away <laughs> um you all around you you can see is a field of razor sharp grass like blades that stretches as far as the eye can see and the sky above you is filled with thousands of demons Uh, coming in after her in the portal do i see her slip anywhere or or vanish or can i like reach through Uh, the nether realms i'm gonna i'm gonna gonna come to you guys yeah okay yeah sorry i'm just scared um (laughs) Kill the demons, Rudy. <laughs> yeah, I guess I just start fighting the demons. That's all I can do. I'm like, well, I'm not going to step on those razor blades. Okay. Do I have my axe with me? Yep. Oh, um, actually, can I... Um, what can I do with my axe? Can I uh, moonbeam around me? Or, you know what? Or, or a vitality. Like, I want to get a little bit of something back. <laughs> okay. All right. Um... As you, as you call out the, the magic of the aura of vitality and begin swinging your axe, um, Sebastian and Wrath, you are standing... Uh, you, uh, you step through the portal and you are in a great hallway of that is composed of a, almost a blackened octarine sort of stone or metal. It's hard to say what material... The, the place that you're standing in is actually made of. You are upon a platform where there are glowing arcane runes of the teleportation circle that you have just stepped through. 
and um, there are four sets of stairs that lead down from the dais, and you are in the the room itself is octagonal shaped, with um, four of the faces of the octagon have doorways leading out of the room, and then the other four faces have massive iron golems who ha have drawn their blades. The the iron golems themselves are constructed uh, out of the same metal as the as the room itself. And each of them has a massive delirium geode as their core um, that is that has like a dynamo of, of shifting um, revolving parts around it that is just flowing through their in entire form. Um, and as these these creatures um, ra raise their weapons, um, the you see that there is a small altar. Uh, where a very shocked-looking academy mage, um, a rather uh, a rather portly man with a with a, a academy robes, and he, and he's scream he's screaming because the room is flashing and screeching, um, and in the midst of this flashing and screeching, you look beside you and you see Cat is with you, and you see Rudy is on the dais, swinging her axe, screaming at the top of her lungs, saying something about demons all, 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 around, all around her. Demons! Demons! <laughs> demons everywhere! <laughs> Get them away! Demons! Uh, um, and uh, uh, um, the, the wizard uh, that, is, that is in the room um, is, is saying, Ah, 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 intruder! Ah, ah, ah. And and you hear him like fumbling with what looks to be a sending stone, and 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 he and he drops it. He picks it up. Ah, intruder! Ah, yeah. right. We have an appointment. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? They're not an academy mage. What are they doing here? What are they doing here? What are they doing with you? What have you brought this intruder into the... Ah! My name is Sebastian Crow, um, Master Sorcerer. This is Wrath, a member of the Amethyst Academy. and I am is Wrath, our... and my father would not be kind oh, right. to hear about this. We had... We were supposed to be given a guest pass for my comrade, yet you have infected her mind. Release her now. Demon! <laughs> this is our bodyguard. She usually doesn't act like this. Um, new, new, uh, new thing for us here. No, of, of course she, do she doesn't. She's an intruder. And so she is in a mental prison until such a time as I decide to release her because to, to make sure that she is safe and isn't gonna swing that ax at my neck. Ah! <laughs> Do you know who Rath's father is? This is so frustrating. I had sent, uh, I had sent two weeks, uh, uh, one fortnight uh, prior uh, to have a guest pass. Uh, we had an appointment at, at midday uh, this day. Uh, you have me written down. It make, is Rath, Sebastian, and- Make a deception check, because that's totally not true. <laughs> uh, 25. He he has a moment of confusion and says, "Uh oh well, uh, uh, you, you she's with you. I I've got to I've, I've got to check the papers, but I'll but I'll dis I'll, I'll dispel the spell if if you're telling me she's safe. She is safe, and if I have to tell my father about this, oh, he he goes to the um he goes to the altar and and." Um, turns several stones and, and tap taps several runes, and Rudy, just as a demon is about to devour you whole, <gasps> the landscape disappears, and you find yourself standing in the room that I described earlier. Who did that? Who who did that? There <sighs> were demons, and there were really sharp grass, and I was about to be eaten. I Rudy. You were not disintegrated. It's okay. Look on the bright side. <laughs> I thought I was dead. I thought oh, my children were going to be left in your guys' hands. They were going to go to school. And, 
and I was going to be eating my demons! On the contrary, you've probably never felt more alive, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I've, I've, I've definitely felt more alive than this. I've never been scared more in my life. I am sorry, Rudy. Um, there was a mistake at the front desk. They forgot to add you as a, as a guest pass. Forgot to add me, and that's how they treat people. Is Wait. this guy over here? And I point to the <laughs> mage. <laughs> okay. No, no, Rudy, it's not his fault. It was a clerical error, right, sir? Oh, uh, those clerics. <laughs> Uh, 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 now, no, you you don't threaten me. You don't 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 you threaten me. And he he taps another uh, another rune uh, on the dais in front of him, and the four iron golems uh, all point their swords down. <laughs> I how many rings is this guy wearing? Uh, he's wearing five rings. I'm wearing seven, right? Yeah. Okay, I take my staff and my eyes start to glow purple and I step forward and I point the staff at him and I'm like, we're not, we're, um, I am a higher ranking member of this academy and I'm coming here as a guest to see Wrath's father and I've brought my entourage with me and we had an appointment and you are standing in our way. Listen, Master Wizard. Yes. Master, Master Sorcerer, it is my duty to guard the teleportation room. I am just trying to do my job, and you've brought a non-academy member in here. We have arrangements with the person running this facility to move forward. We understand that there might be some complications by bringing her here, but we have already discussed that. What we would like is less complications from people who have the choice whether or not they're going to hinder us. Give me a persuasion check. That's going to be 21. Oh. And and you, he, he points at, at Rudy. You're not going to be swinging that axe around in anyone's faces here? I'm, I don't plan to. Uh, do you plan on sending me back to whatever hellscape that was? N not unless you try to teleport in here again. No, I won't. Listen, I, I think, you know what? We're good. Just don't do that again. That terrifying experience. I think you need to maybe change your, uh, your, uh, your you ask questions first and then send people to the <laughs> hell. All right. Just. It's fine. I, for, I, for, I forgive you. Just don't do it again. Normally, it's customary to get to contact me via a sending spell before you teleport someone that is not an Academy member here, so that doesn't happen. You were supposed to follow protocol. Well, you can blame the director for not telling us the protocol because we spoke to him not that long ago, and he said to come on up. He did say that some things would try to kill us, but he didn't say you would try to kill us or tell us what we were supposed to say to you. So, Wait. not... You're here to see the director. That's correct. We have an appointment. <laughs> You're here to see the... You're serious. Wrath's so father, yes. About this, sir, it's his father. He is my father and we are here to converse with him <laughs> well well uh, 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 i i mean <laughs> all right i i i, I mean i uh, you're li listen you're free to come and go the you're all you three, at least, pointing at you. You're all guild wizards. The halls of the Enigma Ziggurat are open to you. Go wherever you want. If you're going to be bringing her around, the, all, all, all I have to say is you're not to let her out of your sight. For a moment. At all. Understood? 
Agreed. I don't plan on on going out of their side. I'm going to stay with them. I don't know what other things might do worse to me than, than what you did. Oh, there's... Well... There's other defenders, the other protectors of the halls, the other mages, of course. If they see see you wandering around the, the ziggurat, they'll think that you're an intruder and they'll do what needs to be done to protect the interests of the Amethyst Academy. <laughs> Please don't swing that axe at me. Sir, so I, I work with the Academy, so I don't know what's got y'all in, in a little tiff about this. I may not have rings. I can do magic. And I work with the academy, so you know what? I'm I'm just here to do my job and be with these gentlemen and and make them sure they're safe along the way. All right. Which uh, who are you all again? I'll just make sure that this is this is recorded, and that way people know that you're that you who you are, and and that you're here, and 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 that you don't get any get any trouble. Uh, uh, duh. What's your name? Um, I'm going to approach. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am Wrath. Right. Let me let me write it. It's a um, it's a different spell. Let me see your. One of the customary things to do to prove your identity to another academy mage is to present your rings, and usually cast a cantrip like Mage Hand or Prestidigitation or Light. Or something that just signals that your rings work. Um, yeah, so I approach. I approach. I'm gonna kind of face my palm towards him um, with my ring, my ring hand, and um, my hand starts to glow, uh, casting the light trip, the light cantrip with like a purple um, academy, uh, mm -hmm. academy purple. My hand starts to uh, to glow, and all the rings start to glow an even deeper uh, shade. Cat smiles, holds her hat, hand out, and uh, says, I'm Cat, and shows her rings. My name's Sebastian Crow, and I will show you an illusion. And I, I wave my hand around in a little minor illusion of, like, dancing purple orbs float above my hand, and then I take and, it away. And your friend? And, uh, my name's Rudy Whitaker, Sheriff Rudy Whitaker and uh, listen, I can do magic too, and I I kind of brush off any any dirt or or dust or anything that's around <clears> using <throat> press digitation, and I go, ooh, see, so yeah, I magic too. Hmm. Well, welcome to the Enigma Ziggurat. Then, um, you said you had business with the director. Um, no one has business with the director, so it's up to you to arrange a meeting with him i mean i don't know what he told you or where you're supposed to meet him but uh if you want to uh through, through that door is the atrium uh the, which goes through to the great hall uh that way will take you to the workshops um the workshops are a restricted area you won't be able to bring your friend there uh that's where we're doing uh, all the the, fa the foundries and the forges uh, if you just need a place to stay, the dormitories are up this way. Uh, then there's a great hall. And um, just remember that um, if you come to the stair that leads down to the depths, the depths are a restricted area. Um, we don't use those chambers. Go down there at your own risk. Most everyone that goes down there usually dies. So, yeah. So we can go down there. Do you know where the director usually can be found? Uh, his office is somewhere in the depths. Oh. oh. Naturally. You, normally, if the directors need to meet with someone, they usually do so in the, the, uh, the endless corridor, the Great Hall. The director's not going to meet you there? Wrath? No. Oh. I'm not surprised. The director hasn't met with anyone in months. <laughs> he is very busy. We do not like to bother him, but this is the most... This is of the utmost importance, and I do remember coming here with River and and Eldrick. Um, 
we will find our way. You know River and Eldrick? Yes, River is my sister, and Eldrick is oh. one of my former teachers. Oh, they, they're they they're here all the time. Um, I'm sure uh, they, they usually are, are here a couple times a week, so if you're meeting with them, if you're working with them, you'll I'll let them know that you came. Good. Yes, yeah. Look in the, in the guest book. Thank you. And what's your name again, uh, fellow mage? Uh, oh, I, I'm Master Wizard Simon Duan. Well, Simon, uh, good work today. Um, keep on doing what you do. I have to admit, it's... Uh, I've had this position for a couple months now, and this is the first time there was ever an intruder. It was terrifying. I am so sorry. I'm just glad that you weren't actually trying to kill me. No, if we were trying to kill you, you would probably be dead, and that would be horrible for everybody, so we're all happy that we weren't trying to kill you. Mm, well, again, just some feedback, some Maybe change your protocol. Ask the questions first, then put them in a mind prison or, or wherever you sent me, you know. And then you can decide if it's actually someone trying to kill you. I mean, I was just following protocol. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably going to take a lot of work in order to change protocols in these places. Um, but we can put a uh, request in the request box. Uh, I know Paradox Castle had a request box. You put requests into it and watch them go in and immediately disintegrate. It was very disheartening. Yeah, probably won't do that. Well. Well, very well. Welcome to the Enigma Ziggurat. Thank you. Uh, Wrath, should we try the atrium first? Or should we try the Great Hall uh, just to see if he's there? The... We may. However, Rudy is not permitted. Um, she well, will have to wait in the lobby um, unless we head to the depths, in which case... We're all going to die? That we might die. Um I believe the same chance that we might die is the same chance that Rudy will be disintegrated upon arriving in the Enigma Ziggurat, which we have mm. proven is um, actually 52. 50, 52. And look, Rudy's still here. She wasn't disintegrated. So you want to go straight for the depths? Yes, we have a an important meeting. Yeah, I just uh, did your father say he would be in his office? He did not want to be disturbed, and I knew how important the rod is, so we, I sort of pressed the matter. Um, he didn't, he was hesitant, however, um, he agreed as long as we can show up. We are doing a great disservice to him, so I, I do not wish to waste his time. So the assumption is that, yes, he's in his office and he hasn't left. Yes, he works many long hours. Well then, into the uh, depths that nobody ever returns from, but that the director Most. also keeps his office in. Uh, sounds like a treat. I'm also very interested in what Kat has told us. There may be other secrets in the depths that have not been found by other Academy members. I have not been here in many years and I have learned so much. I mean, I want to give him credit. If I was a director of the Amethyst Academy, I would put my office in the the depths too. It's the perfect way to never be disturbed by nosy wizards. She looks at Sebastian. You mean she like you, you, who means you. <laughs> organized this whole meeting and is interrupting the director and has forced us into it at the threat of Rudy's children, is what you're trying to say. So, let's go! And I start walking towards the whatever hallway leads to the depths. Hmm. Um, so, um, you head through the... Um, you head up the stairs... Um, out of the teleportation chamber um down um a 
through a set of great, uh, great arched doors that lead into, uh, that as you open the, the doors up, you almost feel like this feeling of vertigo, even as you step through the, do the door from one room to another, as if somehow what was on the other side of the door shifted into place just as you were opening the door to get there. Um, and the room bef be be before you um, is a hallway um, that that as you open the open the door up into the hall, um, it stretches to the left and to the right. Um, then kind of zigzags awkwardly uh, off uh, off around, and various other doorways come off the uh, off the off this hall. Several academy wizards are walking through the hallways themselves uh, with uh, with shield guardians protecting them. Um, they are carrying with them several boxes, and on and on a wheeled cart um and the box itself appears to have a lot of delirium in it <laughs> um and you can see them walking towards uh the areas where the workshops are um they nod as uh, but say nothing to you as, as as they pass by they look awkwardly at rudy and look at you and continue moving along oh I, this isn't that much different than paradox castle i mean I remember walking up a staircase and winding up on the bottom floor. I remember uh, one time I fell through a pit in the floor and ended up on the roof. Um, so, I don't know. It gives me the same vibes. It's sort of the academy thing, it seems, to just have angular hallways and weird, nonsensical forming path passages. Well, this was designed by the Orion that that orion the third was he an academy he was a sorcerer king that was well before the academy yeah maybe uh he really is like the true inspiration behind the nonsense that is academy architecture hmm. he's like the first well wrath this is uh I guess you're, you you know the most about the layout of this place, don't you? Yeah, I already have no idea where we are, and I'm gonna st I'm gonna take a moment and try to. Okay, this is what I want to do. I want to try to sort of guide myself to my father. So I'm gonna sort of try to feel the disappointment that he <laughs> feels for me. <laughs> and I'm going to try to subtly hone in on that. Okay. That, that feeling of, uh, of, of annoyance that he has. I'm going to try to like sense where it's mm. the strongest and you, try to pick what door <laughs> you you feel the overpowering gravity of parental disappointment uh pulling you it's strong <laughs> uh pull this way. <laughs> uh, um and f tapping into that feeling you lead the group along the hallways to through another set of doors that open up into a bizarre ch chamber indeed. All right, it's gonna move here, great. Oh, did the aura of vitality actually work? Uh, Yeah, yeah, if you wanna heal up a little bit, uh, it, absolutely you can, yeah. How does, how does that work? Um, just assume that you healed the damage, but use the spell. Okay. So, um, 
The it opens up into a strange chamber indeed. Um, and I, our audience can see better. Great. Okay. Opening the doors into a rectangular room that is lined all along with staircases. As you step into this chamber, you look up and you look down. And it's not clear where the stairs begin and where the stairs end. <laughs> um, they stretch all the way up and all the way down. And as you look up, the stairs rotate and shift and lock into the different landings, moving into different positions uh, as as you as you go along. Oh, cool. <laughs> Rotating around uh, and moving and relocking, and all through the room, all along the walls, um, are various clocks. Um, of, ver of different types of construction and several of them are floating through the space sometimes the, the the grandfather clocks get hit by the staircases and smash and the pieces of the clocks just are floating as in defiance of gravity through the chamber and after a little while after getting smashed the clocks reform back together and whether they're going forwards or backwards seems to vary based on whether they've been hit by a staircase or not well uh Raph lead on um i confidently walk forward um i i'm gonna i have to i feel like i feel like the only way to do it is to move forward and i i'm i'm probably gonna overlap a bit and do some backtracking but i'm constantly gonna try to put in this mode of like I'm, I'm going to confront my father. I'm trying to harness this feeling of like I'm going to go and confront him mm. and be like, "Look, I found you." Okay. They, the feeling pulls you inexorably downward along the sets of stairs. <clears throat> this way, and I started heading down the stairs. Okay. Once in a while, the stairs shift and change, and you have to stop to get to the next landing or wait for them to rotate or, or what have you. And a few times, as you head down the stairs, you pass by other Academy members who seem to know exactly where they're going. Um, the They move up, because as you go to different landings, there's other doorways that lead off of the tower into different rooms and chambers people are coming people are going and as you head down the stairs there's a fair amount of activity seems like it's a regularly used stairwell perhaps like it is the master stairwell that is used to get across the various levels of the of the of the enigma ziggurat then you come to a place where the stairs rotate but they never connect to the lower level the lower landing they stop go they the the stairs will rotate across the landings but never go down to the landings that are maybe only 30 feet below and as you kind of are, spend that moment waiting for the stairs to shift and change uh, an academy mage, a, a wizened-looking um, half-giant, says, That's down to the depths! Don't go that way! It's dangerous! We have an appointment. <laughs> With death? Is... is, is Rath, no, is your father, Alabaster! Father's... Alabaster! <laughs> Nice knowing you. Thanks. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Rath, it sounds like your father is synonymous with death. Is that true? Is that is that what we're doing? He has not killed me. What I mean to say is 
Uh, my father is a mysterious man. I do not know much about him. He has always been busy and distracted from our time together. His work is his life and that is his focus. And he is a he is determined and what is his work exactly? He he is a craftsman, some might say. Hmm. What's my dad? What does your dad do? Sebastian. My, my dad's uh, the blacksmith. Um, oh, I think he made Wilhelm his armor. He did. He is a craftsman. He yeah. has a quality. Yeah. So, you know, I, I know a few tricks of uh, crafting and, and trade. So um, uh, maybe me and your dad will get along. Somehow, I doubt that, Sebastian. That might be a bit of a stretch. I've never met a direct uh, a director before, and in my brief encounter with them, they all seemed super pleasant. Each of the academy directors is a specialist in one of the eight schools of magic. I believe, in the case of your father, he is well known as a transmuter, which would be fitting considering he is known as a craftsman. Kat, do you know who the Academy Directors are? I only know what I've been able to piece together from scraps. Every... It's taken a long time for me to, pe to, to put it all together. I have a rough sense of who they are. But, and know which ones are responsible for most of the Academy strongholds, but I have to admit, I've only been able to even, even in all my research, I've only been able to really figure out the exact location of the more well-known Academy strongholds anyways. There's a few that I just, that just totally elude, elude me. Mm. And my business is secrets. Yes, and I'm starting to wonder if maybe there is value in us working together. Because I would like to know who the Academy Directors are, and that's something that you might have a knack for finding out. But we'll talk more about that mm. another Dash, time. she hmm? threatened my family. It's kind of what she does, but she's also the most capable person at finding out secrets that I've ever met. I'm not saying that we're on the same team. I'm just saying that information is important and knowing information that could help us in the long run could save a lot of lives. I'm working on something, Rudy. I'm not making allies. Mm. I'm trying to gain intel. Might have to have a little sit down chat after we're done in, in this area. All right. Like maybe when we get back. <laughs> Of course. Talk about this. A pity. Well, Sebastian, certainly I would be happy to negotiate a trade of future information. If you're interested in the other directors, I could definitely check my little Rolodex, my, my, uh, my, my address book to see who I have some information on. Mm. I've got some interesting facts that you might be interested to know for another time though I must admit if I never see another set of stairs it might be too soon after this this is a long way down how far down are we going to go Wrath? I have a feeling it's not much further and uh, I'm going to look for is it does it appear that the next sort of avenue is a bit of a jump? The 
heading down to the next set of landings is a jump. Um, you will either need to fly or jump or climb down from one, down to the lower set of landings. Yes. I can take care of myself, um, or I can take care of all of us, depending on how what I, what we want to do. What um, you, uh, re- what would you propose? I mean, I can turn into something that can get us down there. Um, or I could cast levitate on myself. And it's it's how far how far is it? It's only about a 30 foot drop. Oh, yeah. Uh, why don't we tie a rope and climb down? Sure. Give me the rope. <gasps> Give you the rope. Why not? I'm helping. I hand a uh, cat rope. I'm good with rope. She ties the rope to the banister and toss it to me. You can do that. And she sizes things up, takes off her jacket, uh, and leaps acrobatically over to the next set of, set of balconies. Oof. 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 Yeah. It's no big deal. And uh, she tied the rope off. So it's is it just like sitting there and she wants me to pass it to her? Is that kind of... Yes, it is sit. Yes, pass it to me. That's what I said. I, I'm going to mage hand the rope and move it over towards her. She ties it off to the other banister. <sighs> Practical methods. Save your spells. It's It's down, right? Like it's like this. Yeah. The rope. Right. Yeah, you kind of you kind of zip line down. Yeah, I, I like I, take my I, axe and I, I like, use my staff. Ooh. Yeah, I hope it doesn't break. Okay. As you come down to the lower section of the stairs, how far down these continue to go? Who knows? Um, looking down, the stairs continue to go, and they and now they are rotating once again shifting position and allowing you to progress further down the whole area is getting darker the clocks echo awkwardly across the halls when they when the clocks smash apart against the staircases it is with a spectacular crash and often the thunderous sound of dong gong and the ticking of the gears echoes up and down the the hallway as it does so Every few moments, you think you catch a glimmer of flickering shadows underneath the stairs, or eyes watching you out of somewhere. Cat says, I have a sense for when things are about to get dangerous, and that sense is happening now. I agree with you there. I, uh, don't think falling would be very, uh, would be something I'd re- very much like to do in circumstances. Let's make sure we don't fall, then. Rath, are you sure we're going the right way? I can feel it. Let's the, press on. The more there. dangerous it goes, the closer I feel like we are to his office. You know, your dad doesn't seem like the nicest guy. He is distant. And as you can tell, there are many obstacles. Um, But that is because he does not like to be disturbed. Um, I disturbed him many times when I was younger and it only bothered him. Now I focus on doing right by the academy and with Bruce's help I I succeed well I hope uh, this meeting with your father is uh, goes okay I 
I have my doubts. Uh, he, he, I spoke with him last night and he was willing. Mm. I think if we give Cat, Queen of Thieves, Cat what she wants, um, and we re retrieve the rod, then we can continue on. That is what we're here for. There is a growling and a brief shudder like something large is breathing growling in the depths below Rudy was that your stomach no no it I mean it would have been really awkward timing but no there's some down there some we I want we're gonna to have to face ask Bruce what do you see is there something below us Bruce says yes they're coming destroy them how much time do we have roll for initiative <laughs> so not much <laughs> oh there we go not much at all Good. All right, uh, Sebastian, what do you got? An eight. Okay. Rudy. Twenty. Ooh. Ooh. And Raf. Uh, Seventeen. Happy. Okay. And all right. Rudy, there is something moving just at the edge of your dark vision below you. It's large. There's two of these forms. The shadows cling to leathery. They're flying up towards you. What are you going to do? How far away are they from me? Probably about 80, maybe 100 feet below. Oh. Um, okay. I am going to... Oh so far away <laughs> they are they're that's far away i'm gonna cast magic missile at them okay you cast magic missile at the darkness that's 120 feet right okay <laughs> the shadowy shapes that are far in the darkness below the magical bolts echo and dart towards them how many uh, how many darts are you firing uh how many do i get uh is it three? Three. Three darts. Yeah. Take that. Ah, uh, so that's four damage. Okay. Uh, <laughs> five damage and three damage. Okay, twelve total. Woo! These streaking bolts of magic briefly yeah. illuminate the creatures below you. Would you like to move? Uh, if I can go down the stairs, yeah, I'm going to make my way. Just char start charging towards them. Okay. And... Yeah, that's all I'm going to do for now. You see, illuminated for a moment, the horrific form of the disheveled creature before you. It is a massive reptilian creature with a long serpentine neck and large bat-like wings. It has four, uh, it has two forearms and hind legs that end in wicked claws and its scales are of a mottled black. Its face 
and head. Though its form is like that of a dragon, its head is more like that of a snake in its shape. And its eyes are these massive circular bulbs that are milk white. The creature dives, sorry, not dives, shoots up, banks up through the corridor. There are two of them. Sorry, did, Rudy, did you want to move? Um, yeah, I just trying to figure out where these, which way these stairs go down. So, <laughs> um, fair, totally fair. I'm just, yeah, if I can move. Okay. Here. As as you bank down, um, one of the dragon, one of these draconic creatures, um, flies up. Right up to you. And as you come across the balcony, it reaches out with its claws um, to bite at you. Oh my no. Not Rody. <laughs> leave her alone. Uh, getting a 22 to hit. Shield. Okay. Uh, it claws at you twice. Getting uh, not, way not enough. Uh-huh. Uh, and and the, the claw strikes gr- reach out as if it was going to grasp you and pull at, at you. Just as you do so, though, another flies up right beside you. Um, and it flies and it unleashes, and as it does so, it screeches. This reverberating screech that ec- that... that bounces off the walls with almost a metallic sound to it as if someone was pulling a piece of uh, like pulling a dagger across a chalkboard just that (sighs) yeah that grating screech um unleashing a cloud of spores from its breath um and i am going to need um wisdom saving throws from Wrath, Sebastian, and Cat. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 25. 25? Will, uh, uh, Sebastian? Today. Four. Four? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget your resistance. Sebastian, <laughs> you Wait, take- I'm resistant? If oh, you want to, yeah. if you want to pop your legendary resistance, you have one oh. use of it. Uh, I don't know how bad this is going to be. Let's find out. Okay. We don't know. We don't know. Sebastian, you take uh, um twenty two psychic damage, and you are frightened <sighs> of the creature for one minute as nightmares embed themselves in your waking uh, waking mind. Oh. Um, you can repeat the saving throw at the e- at the end of each of your turns, ending the. Frightened on the success. Wrath, you instead take 11 psychic damage. Woo! Um, and Kat uh, is fine. She succeeds her saving throw uh, and doesn't take any damage. Um, and I think... Um... With that... The balconies. The staircases um, shudder and shake. They don't move this round. Wrath, what you got? So, really quick, uh, with my thought shield, this creature uh, also takes... Now, I don't know how the resistance works in, but uh, 11 resisted psychic damage. So, it's um, with thought shield... Uh, any creature that does psychic damage to me takes that same amount of damage. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Um, and I just don't know if that's before or after the resistance, but I took five psychic damage. Okay. Uh, we'll uh, um, we'll check so this. I'll probably take five psychic okay. damage. Okay. We'll go with that then. We'll we'll double check that, but we'll go with we'll go with. So as now- my mind shatters, it it reverberates as Bruce. Uh, uh, repels the uh, psychic attack. Okay. And then 
Bruce uh, screeches uh, his own screech. <laughs> it's your turn, Wrath. And uh, f- uh, flies out at the creature as um, as Eldritch blasts. Oh, that's not very good. Uh, come out. So with advantage, uh, I get a fourteen. The shot is deflected off the creature's wings. Ooh, ooh. Um, I take a, a second, a second blast, getting another <laughs> fourteen. <laughs> Oof. Both go wide. And the third attack is a 28. <laughs> well, third time's the charm. There it is. <laughs> the, um, the, the, the creature swiftly uh, evades through its wings the first two shots before taking the third uh, soundly, um, be, before being and, hit soundly by the third. And uh, I'm going to drive it back with uh, 15 force damage. Okay. And do you want to push it? Yeah, I'm going to push it back uh, 10 feet, trying to get it push it back uh, towards the stairs. Okay, push it back. And I'm going to run down. Um... To there? Okay. Uh, right to here by the door. Great. Um, it is Kat's turn. Um, and she is going to help you all out a little bit here (laughs) you better (laughs) let's see why they call her the queen of thieves what is she gonna steal their hit points Uh, that would actually be pretty important she she might try to steal their wings that seems to be key to their uh, attack pattern um She, though, is going to start off her her turn, and she's going to move over to Rudy and say, I know we've had some issues, but if you could help things out by hurrying this up a little bit, that would be excellent. And she's going to cast haste on you, Rudy. Ooh. (laughs) There it is. And I just say back, I'm like, I'm doing my best. It'll be done when it's done, all right? And she moves down the re- the, the the rest of the stairs. <laughs> okay. And Sebastian, it is your turn. Well, Kat just left me cowering up at the top of the stairs like a scared little boy. Um, I, I felt like I was like going to push my back up against her so that we would be back to back, and then she just left. Um, <laughs> Do you still cower? <laughs> I'm. I mean, yes, I'm frightened of oh, these no. creatures. Oh yes, so yes, you're frightened. Yes, I am. I'm cowering, but as my mind is riddled with fear, I I try to focus and reverse it, and my purple uh, scarf starts billowing in non-existent wind as I hold my staff up. And these two beams of purple energy shoot out from my eyes and connect with each of the creatures. And I'm going to twin Tasha's mind whip. Cool. All right. So I got to make some saving throws on both these these guys. Yeah. Those are intelligence saving throws. Okay. I get an 18 and a 12. Uh. The save DC is 18, so one of them fails. Okay. And uh, we'll say, you know what? The one that's right up against Rudy is the... Can I can I say that? That, that That's the one that fails? Or do you get to choose which uh, one fails? Uh, technically, I should have rolled them separately. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Uh, it's the one beside Rudy. You win. Cool. Uh, you get your uh, way. <laughs> awesome. And uh, then I, I'm going to, with my with my scarf still billowing, I, I open up my cl- cloak and Crowley flies out from under my, my coat and flies up to the one next to Rudy and starts pecking at it. And uh, it's going to give the help action to Rudy. Okay. Um, and I take some psychic damage, don't I? Yes. Oh, sorry. I should probably do that. Um, psychic damage. Tasha's mind whip. 3d6. Fourteen psychic damage. 
Not bad. Not bad. Okay. And can I make my saving throw against fear again? Yeah. yeah. And that's wisdom, right? Correct. How does 18 sound? That sounds good. You are no longer frightened, but this is at the end of your turn, so you won't yeah. be able to move any. The, the blasting of Mind Whip is what I did to kind of null my fear. Nice. Nice. Um, as the Mind Whip, the creature is affected by the Mind Whip, but it's, it seems like it, the, it its nature did dull it somewhat against the psychic damage. Hmm. Mm. Um, going back up to the top of the round, we've got Rudy. Okay. Um, so now that this is within my range, I take my axe and I go at it and I'm like, yeah. stay away from my friends. And, um, I have, I'm also going to take my haste action as an attack. So I'm going to take four attacks. Oh um, man. And. Can I use two help back? Like, can I use Crowley and Houdini, or only one? Technically, yes. I, I'm gonna say yes. We'll check that later. I th yeah. I'm gonna say yes, though. Yeah. Okay. So Houdini's gonna also help, and I say, "Get over here, Houdini! Look at this crow I'm already doing the work." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. So shaming Houdini. Oh. Uh, 26 to hit. There it is. For, uh, uh, 25 damage. Okay. Uh, oh my god. I just rolled double crit. Yeah! <laughs> Two 20s, <laughs> Two 20s. Uh, on, on the, on the oh, event. Nice. Woo! Oh my god! Okay, um, so I crit. <laughs> um... <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, doing the Rudy. What is that? 18 plus. Uh, Cat gets it. Is haste, that 30, 30 plus, a, plus the roll, right? Um, 32 damage. Wow. It's um, the, the massive blow reverberates through, through its body and already addled with the mind whip, the creature shudders in, in, in its wings, barely managing to keep itself aloft, but it is it, it, uh, barely managing to keep itself aloft. All right. Number three. Uh, wow. Okay. These hot dice. <laughs> um, that's a, uh, 24 to hit. Okay. Uh, for, oh my gosh, um, thirty damage. Tell me what how you finish this creature off. Oh my gosh! So I go. I'm aiming for like its wings. So I'm like hacking away its wings, hacking away its wings, and then it's as the wings fall off, I chop its head right off. <laughs> okay. Classic as the pieces room. of it fall down the endless stair. As they fade out of sight, they dissipate in, into the darkness. But as they fall, looking up, you see just fragments of whatever was left of it dripping down from up above. Oh, that's weird. Huh. That's, uh... We weird. This place is weird. Okay. All of you can roll me a d6. Oh my. Oh. Five. One. One. My luck ran out. One. Three. All right. <laughs> there is another shuddering noise. As another creature flies up from the darkness below the flying up to replace its fallen comrade flies up the stairs towards wrath ah! and launches in with its claws oh do i get to finish by oh yeah you do get one I more sorry yeah you get another okay. yeah i'm sorry you had one more attack and movement my... it's okay yeah i i and actually, because I killed it, I could use my bonus action to take an extra attack. Yes. Great yeah. the, um, 
I'm just gonna move this one off the field because it's not there yet, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, how? C- Ooh, hold on one sec. Then I won't use my bonus action to do that. I'm gonna use my bonus action to. What's your speed with uh, haste? Uh oh, it's doubled actually. Hold on. Thank you for reminding me of that. If I. I'm assuming this is like a, a, it's not level. Yeah, that's going, that would be going down. Yes. It just goes down? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, uh, sorry. So that would be, I can get to the. Running, running jump? Running. <laughs> can I running jump? Is there enough room to running jump? Um, How, how far can you jump? Your strength is 20, so you can jump 20 yeah. feet. Hmm. So I made it from there. No, I wouldn't make it. Yeah, okay. if you want to get over there, I, I feel like you're going to have to... Misty step. Misty step to get there. Okay. All right. Even, gonna... even with your increased speed, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then what I'll do is I'll... Um, I'll Misty step as my bonus action to get to it. I imagine that you kind of leap through the air and halfway through the air, just as you're starting to fall, you just poof. Yeah. Missy step over <laughs> and yeah. end up. Let me just grab Rudy over here. Oh, okay. um, and Gosh. then in midair, as I'm coming through, I bring my ax down onto it. Nice. Uh, oh, eight, 18, 18 plus uh, seven. So 25 to hit. And then, oh. um, 24 damage. All righty. And yeah. then, um, I'm gonna action surge. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Three more. Kill it. <laughs> like a record of how many. Go, Rudy. One turn. Um, 200 it's... cumulative of da- damage. <laughs> um 24 to hit oh my gosh um 21 damage okay do you get an extra attack on haste no no No, i already i already did that yeah like um okay one um 20 to hit yep oh my god (laughs) okay that's uh 27 damage. Okay. Oh my and <laughs> still on the board. One, one still more. on the board. <laughs> okay. Maybe not. One more hit. 16 to hit. Yep. <laughs> uh, That's just enough. Um 23 damage. It's slain. What <laughs> happens with this one? So Basically, you finish the first one off, turn around, leap through the air, teleport behind this other one, cut its wings off, and cleave it in twain. And as its body descends down into the darkness below, there is a harrowing screech. As you roll the one, so I I, I gotta escalate this situation. Okay. I was gonna I was gonna wait one more round for this, but but you killed them both, so they're coming now. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> A much larger one <laughs> flies up from the central chambers below. Oh, the mama, the mama reptile, winged reptile, flying up um, from below. The one significantly larger than its smaller siblings. Um, Flies up out 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 from the uh, out from the air, um, and it um, and as it does so, taking uh, taking space in in the air before you, it unleashes its much more powerful nightmare breath. Uh, mm-hmm. And that one is going to oh I can't get all of you from that position so. Uh, it's gonna hit Sebastian and Rudy, oh. <laughs> and I need 
wisdom saving throws from both of you. Why can't it be charisma? Let's see. Wisdom? Yeah. I got a 19. 11. Okay, Rudy, you fail and take oh, no. 33 psychic damage. Oh no. Sebastian, you succeed, but still take 16 psychic damage. And oh. you are frightened of this creature now, Rudy, until you you save to shake it off. Oh my. Um, you know how angry you've made it. I understand, <laughs> Mama Beast. I understand. You, I, we just, I just imagine Rudy, like, just moving, like, with, like, a trail behind her. As she's going around this the these stairways, these these incomprehensible stairways, murdering these winged creatures. Uh, I want to point out that like Sebastian barely noticed the other creature flying up because he's never seen Rudy in combat before. And he just was like, oh no, dragons. Yeah. And then they all died within a span of six seconds. And he's just standing there like, what? <laughs> what? And then I'm like, behind you. <laughs> okay. The balconies. The balconies move. Oh. Okay. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's going to. Is anyone. Sta All these other creatures are flying, so that's not going to affect any of the flying creatures, but that could affect... Uh, but Sebastian, you are now stuck on that balcony. <laughs> yeah, I was about to step onto the staircase and it moved away, and I'm yeah. like, ah, nuts. <laughs> okay. Um, Wrath, it is your turn. Um, I am going to... Uh, get this party started. Uh, I'm going to throw up um, a hex on the large creature. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to uh, attempt to debilitate its uh, strength. Okay. Uh, let's see how that can help. And then uh, I have a. Uh, I'm going to have um, Bruce fly into its uh, radius here. As uh, we go after it, so I begin a, an eldritch barrage with a twenty-eight Ooh, uh, to start it off. That's a hit, and that's going to be for nine force damage. Okay. Um, second attack without advantage, uh, a twenty-three to hit for. Oh, that's better. Uh, so with the hex, it's 18 force damage. Oof. And the final attack is, uh, will a 16 get me there? It will not. It does not penetrate the thick hide of this creature. Um, and so uh, after my uh, uh, after my barrage, and I will not uh, attempt to uh, move it. Okay. Um, from its space, it's going to use its legendary action to make a tail attack against Sebastian. Wow. Sebastian, no! Uh, I can't, I have nowhere to go. Sebastian, <laughs> I get a 23 to hit. I have nowhere to go. I'm down. Um, Sebastian, <laughs> that is gonna be- Or up. Nine or up. points of bludgeoning damage, and I need a strength saving throw from you, buddy. Oh, uh, no. Bro. I'm not, I am not a strong man, I get a three. Uh, mm. The dragon uh, knocks you 10 feet. And you are, and you fall prone. Uh, so you get uh, you get um, knocked off the balcony there, buddy. <laughs> Which do I get knocked into the into, into the, the abyss? Into the void. Yep. <laughs> All right. So I'm just falling. Yep. Ah! Uh, and as Sebastian <laughs> falls, Sebastian, no, no. Sebastian falls, and you hear see him fall all the way down. You hear the scream. Ah! Uh, as he falls from <laughs> above. I am dodging staircases as I'm falling. They're moving and winding, and I'm just like, <laughs> I actually, when I, I start getting used to it, and I pencil in and just start going, whoosh, whoosh, and like dodging staircases as I'm trying to fall through them. Well, that's a good question, actually. Do you give me a <laughs> dexterity saving throw? <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
18. Okay, you do manage to dodge the staircases. Smash that. <laughs> ah, ah, and I'm just diving now. Ah. Full skydive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so you're just going to continue to fall. Okay. In, in, in tell, uh, in, in, until you stop falling. Cool. <laughs> sounds sounds like a plan. How how fast is he falling? Um. Well, he, it, like I, is I, he <laughs> like he's gonna reach terminal velocity pretty soon. <laughs> uh, basically, um, here here's the here's the way it works. If you hit a staircase, you're gonna take ten d six points of damage for every round you've spent falling. I'm fine. <laughs> and he's like per round. Yes, reflecting the fact that he's picking up speed as he falls. We need Veo in her feather fall, you know? Yeah. I hope you, uh, yeah, you're picking up speed slowly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the, the ads are getting, uh, Closer, yeah, closer gra- gra- gravity's a little wonky in here, uh, as you can no doubt tell. So uh, he might not be speeding up as, as as quickly as you would imagine him to be. But um, but yeah, so Wrath, uh, that that is your turn and the legendary action. So Cat, um, Cat <laughs> uh, uh, sees uh, sees this situation, um, and she is going um, to. Seeing Sebastian falling down and down uh, like this for 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 some time, um, well, technically, I guess he could. She smiles and laughs at Sebastian, um, chuckling. Why? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, yeah, she actually doesn't have much uh, um, to help you. Uh, with that, unfortunately. Uh, so what she will do instead uh, is she's going to... S- seeing the the dragon uh, out there before, uh, before her, um, what she will do is... She's going to get sneak attack because of the presence of Bruce there. So she is going to sneak attack the dragon uh, by throwing, one of, one, of, throwing one of her daggers at it. Um, she does hit the dragon, uh, and, uh, deals, uh, a total of 20 points of damage to it. Woo! Um, and then she's gonna, she, she says, Sebastian, pick yourself up. Come on. And then she's gonna continue moving down the stairs. Um, okay. Okay. And the dragon will use its other legendary action uh, at this point, uh, after Cat's turn, uh, and it releases these darkened spores uh, that encircle around Wrath. Wrath, I need a constitution saving throw. Ooh. Uh, okay. Um. Ooh, okay. So I only get an eight. But I think now might be the time to pull out that legendary resistance. Cool. You're definitely not going to regret that later. (laughs) (laughs) Uh oh. (laughs) Well. So so nothing happens. (laughs) Yeah, you succeed. You're safe, and you do not uh, you do not take poison damage. And, and I have are, no regrets. And you are not poisoned for for one hour. Yeah. Yes. Sebastian, it is your turn. Okay, I'm falling. I'm falling, yeah. and yeah. Um, I I grab my bag and I start rifling through it while I'm dodging staircases, and I pull out a potion, and I pop the cork and slam it into my mouth. I have a potion of flying that I've had for <laughs> a very long time. <laughs> been waiting for this yes and yeah i i drink my potion of flying and i i try to time it so i drink it as i know i'm going through the bottom and appearing back up at the top and heading down above the dragon 
Okay. So I grab the potion of flying, I drink it, and I start, I, with the goggles on, I grab my staff and I start spear, like, diving towards the dragon. And as I do, I'm going to quicken and cast, um, yeah, um, I hold my staff out, and from the tip of the staff, a beam of energy, um, a beam of energy shoots out of the staff, and I'm going to cast Sunbeam Ooh. at the dragon. Nice wow. play. So I got to make a Constitution saving throw, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I get a sixteen. All right. So the beam makes contact with the dragon, and uh, so that's going to be sixty-eight. It, fa it failed its throw? Yes. Uh, it that's going to be 25 damage. Nice. And I'm going to have Crowley fly up and start pecking at it again. And I'm going to use my legendary action. Oh, but I can only use it... Can I use it to take an action? Um... No, you can just use it for the, the purposes that we've expressed. You can't use it. Okay. It's not like action surge, I'm afraid. All right. Yeah. Uh, that was my big plan, but the, the, I just the, realized the flaw. The notable the, the thing flaw. with the legendary action is you can use it to interrupt to, uh, at the end of someone else's turn if you want to use right. it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, well, cool. That's that's all I'm going to do then for this for turn. Yeah. Okay. And I'm flying towards the dragon. All right. We go to the top of the round with Rudy. So these staircases are pretty pretty close here. Okay. Um so I am going to Oh nice. Run ten feet this way and then jump ten feet across. And then I guess can I run over to this section right here? Could you cut could you cut through? Can you, like, could you reasonably... I could jump 20 feet, right? Yes, you can jump 20 feet as long as you get 10 feet of movement before you do so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh oh. I probably can't hear it then. Um... Yeah, because I could jump Yeah, there. you could jump there, yep. And then... That's... That's 20 feet, I guess, for, uh, from there, and then... Because I have double right now. I have yeah. 60, I guess. That's 50. Yeah, I can't quite make it to him. Okay. Um, if you give me an athletics check, I'll give it to you. Yeah? Yeah. Let's take a look and see athletics. Oh, that's a... Uh, um, I feel like you could make it. I feel like... That's a... 16 plus 9 it's a lot all okay, right 20, 25 you, uh, you leap across the the so as the as the staircase le comes towards you you leap from one to the other as they're kind of rotating in place uh, and manage to to uh, yeah. get up to the the place where the dragon is all right leaping across the stairs there. yeah and i get houdini up here and i just start wailing on it Um, twenty six to hit. It's a hit, and Crowley's helping as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, nice. Eighteen. Twenty two damage. Mm hmm. Okay, so that's one help. Second help. Uh, that is gonna be twenty to hit. Okay. And then that is. Ooh. Um. Uh, 29 damage. And then my third. Oh. Um, 25 to hit. Oh. And then that's, uh... You're, you're, you're applying the minus five, right? Yeah, this is with the plus, only plus seven. <laughs> Instead of a plus 12. Gross. Gross. Yeah. Um, I know I'm having to do lots of mental math right now. Um... 
two, that's uh, 18 plus 7, 25 damage. Okay. I'm still alive for now. <laughs> and so that's my attack. Um, that was three. You still have your hasted bonus action. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to hit him again. <laughs> hit it. <laughs> um... Okay. Oh no, that's a that's a one on the okay. die. So nope. Um, and hit. I'm gonna second wind just to get some hit points back. Okay. Uh, as my bonus action, so that's eleven plus two, thirteen. And the dragon is gonna tail whip you. Woo! No. I mean, I did hit it a lot with. I axe, get a twenty-seven so to hit. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be twelve points of bludgeoning damage and give me a strength saving throw. Or you got this. You got this. Strength ready. saving. Um, twenty six. Ugh. 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 Okay. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Okay. Um, I get slapped across the face of the tail, but I don't move anywhere. <laughs> all right. The balconies. Okay. The balconies. Good junk. Oh. <laughs> this is uh oh. <laughs> where do I go? I you do go I go with the balcony? There. Yeah, you go with the oh, balcony that's where... there. <laughs> <laughs> right back to where you started. <laughs> um Oh, you know what? I forgot something. You were frightened. Oh, you're right. You, which means that you couldn't have done any of that. No, you're right. Shoot, I forgot. Yeah. Sorry, Monty. All right. Yeah. Um, do you know how much it was? Just put it I back. do. I do. Okay. Actually, yeah, I have it. Yeah. So I'll uh -oh. still take the second wind, but I can firebolt it. Yes, you you can. Sorry. Oh, that was an epic Sorry, turn. It's okay. I, I totally yeah. forgot about it. My bad. Yeah. In your mind, you did all of that. <laughs> You're like, this is what yeah. I want to do, but it was too scary. Oh. <laughs> At the end um, of the episode, we flash back and Rudy was just having a bad dream all along. All along. I'm still in the front room. Yeah, she's still in a mental prison. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently. 16 to hit? Uh, that, that is a miss, I'm afraid. Oh. Now you can save against the fear, though. Oh, I'm so oh, sorry. Yeah. That was a, no, that was such a okay. cool turn. That was an epic turn, but I will yeah. come back. Uh, so fear is wisdom. wisdom. Yeah. Uh, 16. Okay. That, that you do get out of the, the nightmare breath, though. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I snap out of it. And I'm like, okay. I know what I want to do. So then the bridges move and now it's the dragon's turn. Um, okay. Let's see if I get the breath weapon back. I don't. So who is the juiciest target that I have right now? I'm also still like 50, 60 feet above you, I imagine. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I think it's going to fly up to eat Sebastian. Oh. <laughs> or down. Did I say 50 or 60? What's the range on Sunbeam? I meant, oh, no, it's 60. So I make two claw attacks. <laughs> Getting a 20 and an 18 to hit. Uh, I cast shield. And d does that turn them both into misses? One one hits. Okay. And the bite is another 20 to hit. Oh, that hits. So you take, uh, from the claws, you take a total of 25 damage from the claws and the bite, plus an additional five poison damage. And that was minus one claw, yeah? Yeah, that was minus one claw. So a total of uh, 30 damage. All said and done. Uh, swell, swell, great, wonderful. Yeah, and it it flies up to where Sebastian is now, and and so it like has me in its claw and mouth, yeah, ripping and tearing. It, it's ripping and tearing <laughs> and devouring you as it flies up. Basically, seeing seeing you stop in the air and after you sunbeam it, it basically turns around up in like flies through the 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 sunbeam. Um, though, um. Still able to perceive you, though it was blinded by the sunbeam. Mm. Darn. Yeah. yeah. It knows. It wants. It's hunting. Yeah, I didn't it's see hungry. that coming. 
it's funny. I blinded it, and I didn't see it coming. Yeah. What a, what a <laughs> I world. I say as I'm being tossed around in its mouth. <laughs> Wrath, it is your turn. I, uh... Is it more economical to shoot up or down at this point? Can I see it below? Can I see the top of the, the monster? The way, the way that it is, is that the the top and the bottom, like, you, you can't see it twice. Like, it always Got is it. out of sight. Yeah. Uh, so then I, I look up. Um, Bruce cannot uh, make it. Um, but I begin to pelt it with, uh, with Eldritch power. And I started off with that classic 14. Um, which I don't think is enough. Jill, in exchange, the next time you are able to make attacks, I have the damage that you dealt before, and we will consider those the rolls that you got. Oh, Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Thanks, um, so a fourteen doesn't hit, right? No, not even close. Uh, what about a twenty? That does. Okay, we're back on it. Uh. 14 force damage. Okay. And does it actually have Sebastian in its... Like, is it holding Sebastian, or is it... It's not actually... Uh, I didn't actually grapple him, no. Okay, we're then just, I... We're just being flavory with her description to say that it's grabbed hold of him and is biting him apart. <laughs> Flavorfully, I'm in its mouth with <laughs> yeah, its yeah. claw on You're me, and it's... Flavorfully it's like, being uh, yeah. devoured. Yes. It's got its grip on me. Its mouth is on the other end, and it's attempting to rip me in half. Maybe that happening. potion is sort of like a sauce for it. It's like a dipping sauce. Yeah, I, a, I added a... some uh, je ne sais quoi <laughs> to the to Sebastian Crow you seasoned spice. yourself <laughs> before yeah. it chose to eat you. Um, so I choose to move it 10 feet up. <laughs> um, okay. And uh, a 22 to hit uh, for an additional... Um, 16 force damage and contain. So I move it about 20 feet, uh, with two successful Eldritch blasts away nice. from, uh, nice. Sebastian. Oh. All so right. it's now above me by, by 20, 20 yeah. feet, which is just out of range of its tail attack. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. Okay. Get uh, back fiend. Yeah. So in that case, what it will do, um, is it will use its, uh, spore slavo, on Sebastian, Sebastian, I need a Constitution saving throw. Oh, just blow through your legendary resistance. What's no, the I'm worst gonna get that a, could happen? I'm, I'm going to get a twenty-three on that. Okay, you are not infected by spores that poison you and slowly devour you from the inside. I, <laughs> I bat the spores away. I don't have time for your spores. Okay, no more spores. <laughs> it's a chant. I'm working on it. Okay, it's a new chant. I'm working on. It. Um, all right. The um, cat, she looks up at the dragon. She looks over at you, Rudy. Rudy, if you trust me, if you come down here, I can get you up to that thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get over there as fast as I can. Um, it is going to, she just says, it's going to slow you down, but it's going to get you back up. Sound good? All right. In in other words, she's readying a spell, and bec readying a spell means you have to drop concentration on what you're concentrating on. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Although, does is that taking away the haste, right? Yes, that will take oh. away the haste. I can't move or take actions until. Oh, that will, right. Okay, so she would know better than that. Uh, so she won't drop the haste. Um, it'll it'll have to be your next turn, because, yeah, she, she, she'll she know, because she, if haste goes down, you'll lose your turn, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So... Slow Yeah. Okay. So in, in, in that case, um, she's going to move up, and she will just say, you know, if you get, if you get up to her ne on her next turn, she'll dimension door you up there. Even Ooh. better. All right. In that case, Sebastian, it's your turn. All right. So uh, I drop out of this thing's mouth as it gets blasted by Eldritch Blast 20 feet up. And again, 
Uh, my eyes glow purple as a beam of purple energy shoots out of my eyes and links into the mind of the creature, and I'm going to quicken Tasha's mind whip. Ooh, so I get mind whipped and force beamed. And yeah, wow. Yeah. And I fail both the saving throws. All uh, right. I'm going to legendary resistance the mind whip. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I can't have this guy get mind whipped. So I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, as I link minds with it, uh, it, it repels me back. But then I take my staff and I, I'm going to fly a, a little bit you know, away from it. Um, maybe this way. Yeah. And uh, then I blast it with another beam of my um, my sunbeam. So that, and you failed that save. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, 30. Oh, oh whew. ow. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, so 30 more damage as I hold my staff up and a beam of the beam of, of purplish light energy tears hits into this creature, sending bits of its flesh, searing away bits of uh, flesh with radiant energy. Anything else, Sebastian? Uh, Crowley is going to get in place to continue to help Rudy. All right, Rudy, it is your turn. Okay. Um... How far up is it from where Cat is? Um, from where Cat is, I'm gonna say it's sixty feet up. So that's what I'm thinking. If I dash using my haste action, does that double my jump speed? Sure. Where are you going with this? What do you want to do? I want to go as far as I can, jump, which gets me, it was, I think, uh, that would get me 40 feet, and then uh, use my bonus action to Misty Step up to it. Okay. So using haste to dash, all my movement, and to Misty Step, which my bonus action, I can still use my action to hit it. Okay. Ooh. So you're gonna miss. It, so you're gonna go to the highest point you can. Basically, jump down, Missy, step up. Okay, give me. Uh, okay, you made an athletics check before on the last turn, so yeah. I'm going to allow this. Yeah. Uh, could, yeah. Could you go down instead of up? What you'll What you'll need to do is dash. So dashing will give you 120 feet, and basically, you're what you're going to need to do is run up the stairs. Yeah. Leap across and then misty step to cover the, the distance. And yeah, yeah, we'll give you that. I'll I'll give that to you. Yeah, I yeah, because I don't know how many stairs it would be to go up. <laughs> Basically, what you're what you're gonna do is you're gonna be moving <laughs> down over here, leaping from here up to here, going up these stairs, and then jumping and then misty stepping down and onto it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just take off the spell. Um Woo! And then I start wailing on it. <laughs> okay, so you would have. So you did make four attacks the last time, and one of those attacks missed. Um, but I'm going to give you the rolls that you made last time. But because you kind of changed like the uh, the attack loadout this time, what I'm gonna, just going to have you do? I can is, roll it if you want. Is I'm going to have you roll me a d6, okay. and on a one or two, you're going to lose one of those three attacks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Two. Two? Okay. Yeah. That does mean that it survives. <laughs> uh, so you it's leap monster. onto it. Um, give me an athletics check to stay on its back. It's going to try to throw you off. Oh my. Okay. Oh, um, 23. All right. So you land on its back, crash, crash with your axe twice into its back. Um, and it tries to throw you off with all of its might, but you're, you manage to, to hold on there. It's going to use its tail swipe against you, um, getting a 20 to hit. Uh, it hits. Um, do, I'm like, do I have my reaction? I'm trying to keep track of all things. Yeah, you would have your reaction if you want to use shield. Shield, then. Okay, yeah. so you block it with shield. Okay. 
it just um, doom, it bounces off this like impenetrable as you start to yeah as it tries to thro- throw really. you off um and then the stick- it also has disadvantage on ability checks with strength so it's a lot harder to throw off right uh, yeah. old rudy this um, the stairs do shift one more time again <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah! Yeah, as, as you go flying upwards, the stairs rotate into place, and you land a super cool move to uh, crash into it. Um, it is still alive, though, uh, and it is its turn. So Uh-oh. it's going to go all out uh, on you, Rudy. Um, does its breath weapon recharge? Yes, it does. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, so um, it, uh, what it will do is uh breathe all of its breath weapon on you rudy <laughs> oh my give me a wisdom rudy. saving throw oh do i even want to test fate this um yeah i'm definitely gonna use my legendary resistance okay <laughs> on this all right you definitely yeah. will not regret that cool <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> join the club rudy <laughs> there's fun to be had <laughs> In the Enigma cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying oh we won't regret it, so I feel like I'm not going to regret it. Right? Yeah. So imagine this creature, basically, you're you're on its back, and it has a serpentine neck. So it kind of, like, does that, like, weird, like, swan neck thing where it looks back on you and tries to, like, breathe you off of its back, and you manage to stay on there. You still do take 16 points of psychic damage, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Um, I did add back because I it I didn't get tail whip from the last time I added that back, so I'm just okay. Just so you know. All um, right. So I'm gonna update that. Oh my gosh, ducks and swan dragons. Oh my. All right, Wrath, it's your turn. Uh, okay. I how how far up is this thing now? Is it uh eight plus twenty feet from when you pushed it? Okay, and it was sixty feet, so it's about eighty feet high. Um, I'm going to try to position myself in the middle of this because I want to try to push it this time towards the wall. So if it so, dies, oh, okay. there's a chance that <laughs> he won't fall endlessly. She will. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going for it. Uh, 19 to hit. You got it. Okay, we need this. We need big money. Ooh, big yeah. money. Uh, 18 force damage. All right. As I push it 10 feet on the, uh, on the, on the angle towards the, uh, towards the, the wall. Okay. And feet back with Rudy on it. Um, 24 to hit. That's a hit. Or another 10, uh, the beam force of damage. force pierces through its heart and the life leaves the creature as it collapses to the ground. I want to push it. I want to push it. You push its corpse. Rudy, give me a dexterity saving throw to not fall forever. I get advantage on that because I'm hasted. <laughs> Yay. Oh, crit. I crit it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so uh, as, as the dragon okay. falls with you on its back, you're falling and you just grab your hedge at the edge of the banister with a crash. It crumbles just a bit, and you pull yourself back up o- onto the edge as you watch the body of the dragon fall endlessly. And that's where we're going to take our break. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See you in a few minutes. We're taking a late break this time, but we'll get there. <laughs> and we are back from our short rest. We have restocked on our consumables. And uh, got refreshed all of our uh, powers and abilities, and we're going to play some more D&D. All right. As the, cr- the creature of the dragon, as the dragon's form collapses down into the, the stair, the shifting of the staircases locks into one final position and stops. Cat lets out a sigh. <sighs> and as soon as Rudy, you're back up on the balcony, she stops concentrating on the spell. And I curl up on the stair and just take a quick nap. <laughs> I um I float down and I land next to Cat and I, I turn to her and I go 
Well, it kind of reminded me of back in the day with you, although I can't remember fighting any dragons. Whew. That was not a normal dragon. No. It was constructed, wasn't it? It looked like it was made of flesh. <laughs> oh. But Darn, it, I thought it... Not any sort of natural dragon that you'd encounter anywhere else. Oh. And, uh, yeah, I, we might have some questions for the director on uh, that note. Because a transmuter who's also an architect or a builder might be able to create some interesting things. And um, I, I'm, I'm actually going to walk over and I look down at Rudy kind of napping on the stairs and I go, hey, Red Huntsman. Yeah, I haven't been called that in quite some time. Yeah, uh, you just murdered a bunch of dragons in the span of just like less than a minute. Uh, is this is this normal for you? I mean, I thought Pluto was the coolest warrior I've ever seen, but uh, I've never seen anybody use an axe like that. That was that was insane. Well, I mean, years of practice, and I've I've had a lot of battles thrown my way, and I don't know, Wrath. I'd say this is pretty normal for us. This is par for the. <laughs> Wait, no, <laughs> we. This is normal for Rudy. She is uh, one to decapitate. Uh, ever since our first encounter with a humanoid uh, who had a brain thing, uh, mm -hmm. um, and by brain thing, I mean a uh, an extra brain, um, she has been decapitating ever since, and it is one of her uh, highest qualities. She is very impressive, as befits someone who used to lead the Ochtenwalder regulars. I've had a few of your gang working for, for me over the years. Very, very competent killers, I must say. You've oh. worked with some of my crew. Well, there's a lot of people out there for whom the war never ended. And there's a lot of people whom out there who weren't so as fortunate as to have a lovely family to return to after the Civil War. A lot of those people, those men and women who you fought alongside had nothing left after the Civil War. And they were only good at one thing, the very same thing that you're very good at. Drakenheim needs a lot of killers, and I've needed a lot of killers over the, the days. That's one thing about the Ochtenwald Irregulars. They would do anything that you commanded them to do. Wouldn't they? You're right. You're right. A lot of us are good at following orders and uh, weren't left with much. I was probably one of the only or a few to be able to pull myself out of that real dark place and make something of myself. It's sad what happened to all them soldiers and the rest of my crew. Well, there's still a few of them out there. Maybe you'd like to have a little reunion one day. <laughs> I would like to see what came of my crew and just make sure they're doing all right. There's more than a few. There's more than a few. At least I think so. Yeah. Shall we move on? Yeah, um... I'm just gonna top myself up a little bit with a greater healing potion. Yeah, does anybody have any uh, healing? Or uh, should I should I just drink some uh, potions? Cat pulls out some potions. I just need to remember which one is the actual healing potion and which one is the deadly poison. Uh, was, was that a joke or no you see this one is see i i, I developed an immunity to iokine powder over the many years so it's no problem for me but if you you need it i think it's going to be a very 
very nasty I, surprise. I, I'll, I'll use my own potion. Uh, thank you. Uh, but you used to be so meticulous with labeling. Well, I remember now. They're all poisoned. That's what. <laughs> uh, superior. How many hit points is superior? Uh, superior, I think it's 40. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, gonna need it. Okay. I used two greater hitting potions. And a, and a greater is how much? 20? 20. Yeah. Gonna use two greater. Uh, yeah, I needed a superior and two graders. Wow. Ouch. It seems I, uh, after watching Sebastian fall endlessly, I may have some reservations about the, uh, the next way to go. I do not know if it is up or down or if we are, we have simply arrived. Well, the staircases seem to have stopped, and uh, I'm going to go ahead on a complete wild guess here, but if my theory is correct, your dad maybe stopped those staircases because we killed his critters, and now the staircases, I just say that we follow the path that they're on and see where it leads, because maybe your dad is letting us through. That is actually... Very sound judgment. I'm a pretty smart guy. Yeah, that's hmm. it's reasonable. The stairs do gotta... lead to one set of doors, but like if, if basically they're, they're they still continue the staircases, but with their current configuration, they all point all the landings that you're on connect down such that there is one balcony at the at the bottom of this flight of stairs. That leads to a set of doors. Rath, are your feelings pointing you in that that direction? Yeah. What's uh? What's my uh, gut tell me? Um, your your gut tells you maybe it's lunchtime, but um, <laughs> <laughs> below that, behind that, yeah, just a little bit. Um, and uh, but this this feels familiar. I head towards the door. So like, is this, is this magic or do you just like, are you drawn to the disappointing aura of your father? Like, 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 is there a magical nature, but like I'm walking behind you towards the door and I'm just like, how, how does, how does this work in my ear? Yeah. Okay. How do you do that? How do you, how do you figure that out? All right. uh, The only way I can describe it is, um, I have to, feel my way I don't think there's any sort of um, rhyme or reason to it there is although our connection is diminished it still exists and I have to I have to tap into something that is a feeling although uncomfortable it leads me you open the doors into a that lead down to a a flight of stairs into a room that is filled with arcane machinery. In the alcoves along this, along this chamber are several heaving gears and pistons that are hissing with the sound of, of steam. And the air in here is humid. There is a low arcane thrumming that fills the hall punctuated by the hiss and burst of the the steams from the engines and you can feel the moisture hanging in the air uh through through the 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 hallways um there are collections of of water and mildew that are that are all about and the rest of the room is is made of sort of this this ancient sort of bronzed stonework Interesting. This doesn't look like the rest of the ziggurat. Hmm. Feels different. Feels like 
They can use some magic to clean up all this uh, <laughs> gunk. Yeah, you'd think that the academy would keep their places uh, cleaner. I, I'm gonna like start observing the um, the machinery mm. to see if I can decipher its purpose or what it's doing. Give me an Arcana check. Um, twenty five. Well, you nail it. Um. You are in the engine room. If the Enigma Ziggurat is a massive vessel, this is the apparatus of whatever... Th this is part of the apparatus of whatever keeps it floating. Uh, probably best not to tamper with this, uh, unless we want to bring this whole place crashing down. Uh, actually, and I, I, I flip open a notebook and I just jot down a few notes... In case we want to crash it to the ground. All right. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> so these these machineries are they are they they're just ch they're just churning away. Yeah. Whatever the exact purpose and function of of how this operates, it it is the runoff of some sort of perhaps steam powered apparatus I wouldn't have thought that the uh, academy used steam power that I wonder how this was built this seems to again predate the, the academy entirely they have retrofitted or repurposed this place but as academy mages i do not know if those that run this place even understand its inner workings hmm. i doubt it well does this feel familiar wrath have i been here before even a long time ago yes you have familiar yes that's good I think we just continue. All right. I'm going to start walking towards the end of the room. As yep. you walk towards the end of the room, the doors before you slowly open up and you feel a resonating on your academy rings as Ooh. if the door knew to open when you approached it. I, I turn to Wrath with like a sly look on my face and I go, level seven access. <laughs> okay <laughs> i just stick really close to sebastian yeah, yeah, as yeah, i'm going through close. the door i'm like keep that level seven access open all right the room beyond is in a strange state it appears to be the the start of a sort of of a canal system or a water storage chamber that connects to the rest of the steam system um, and there's a set of stairs that lead down from the above sort of set of canals where the water line is here into some more machinery and in, into some pipes. In this chamber, however, there are several beasts squawking about. They are large, flightless birds. With, wet, with no feathers on their bodies that l resemble something that it, something of a cross between a chicken and an ostrich uh, with slightly reptilian features. And the creatures um, have this strange sort of plumage that isn't horns, isn't feathers, but something in between. The several of them are grouped around the broken pieces of a statue of an academy mage who looks to be perhaps a precocious apprentice. The broken pieces of the statue are stone, but where it is broken is exposed flesh, which the birds are eating. Wrath, uh, siblings of yours? 
Not from any family reunion I remember. These, what you do remember, uh, these are your father's birds. He loves birds. <laughs> Probably more than me. Oh, Raph. I would advise you to uh, steer clear. Um, I mean, if they're your father's birds and he keeps pet birds, what, what's the worst that could happen? And I start walking forward. I do not well. understand. There's actually a ton of bad things that can happen. Um, there appears to be some kind of petrification. Yep. Um, uh, uh, probably you would be eaten alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm walking away from you as you're saying that, and then I'm, I stop and I'm like the the birds are gathering together. Is is, is, is this is, is where, that... sorry? I was just positioning where they uh, were. Yeah, yeah. They they haven't moved. <laughs> yeah. they're, 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 they're all kind of grouped around these these broken statues. Yeah. Okay, I was getting concerned. Um, Things are happening, Sebastian. I don't know if those are statues per se. <laughs> I, it's, uh, I mean, where, where else are we going to go? We got to go forward. Uh, I want to, if we can spend the time, I want to attempt to, uh, cast speak with animals. Okay. Uh, I would use it as a ritual. So okay. Bruce has taught me many, you know, growing up with a cat uh, that you that teaches you magic, uh, you have to learn to communicate. Uh, yeah. And so uh, Wrath has an affinity for uh, beasts and, and speaking with animals. Sure. Technically, these are monstrosities, not animals, but I'm going to have this work because I want to see where you're going with this. So the, the spell works and you're able to speak with, with the, these creatures. I reach into its mind. Um, please let us pass. One of the birds. Uh, cluck, cluck. Ah, the prodigal son returns. The bird says. Which one are you again? I, I uh, am, I'm the favorite of your father. Don't hurt me. <laughs> you better feed me. He'll know. I always bring you treats and I'm sure I've got some leftover uh, fish rations. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, I I I proceed to ruffle around in uh, Bruce's uh Bru treat bag. Bruce says, "How dare you?" <laughs> I give Bruce the bigger chunk. Um you will and... you will give my food to these avian infidels. How dare you? I'm sorry, Bruce. You I... should be killing these creatures so I can eat them. Do you are you hungry? I am always hungry. Can your hunger wait until after we meet with my father? My hunger. You're going to ask me to wait? <laughs> me? After all I've done for you, you're going to ask me to wait. You're going to deny me. You were going to give of my food to these horrible creatures who are undeserving of it. If you say they You are have insulted me twice. You're right. They are undeserving. And I am sorry. Oh, Bruce, please forgive me. I... I... I look to... I look upon the lesser things... Uh, the things beneath you and I pity them but I must if you, but you are right I must not pity them I must destroy them <laughs> I will only accept forgiveness I, forgiveness is only found through actions not words you know this and uh, so there's a group of them right 
Uh, so, so, okay, wait. I just want to imagine this scene for a second. That I, you cast a spell and you start speaking bird, and yeah. then you turn to your cat and start talking cat, <laughs> and then your eyes start to glow as you look back up at the birds. That's that's what I picture just happened. Yeah, true, true. This ha- is uh, all happening. Have you ever seen a cat on one side of a window and it's watching a bird through the other side? And it's making that like very fluttery meow. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the sounds that Bruce is making. Uh, our negotiations going okay? Can we can we go past Wrath? Uh, are we are we all uh, good here? In in. Uh... I just, I just say out loud, Bruce must feed. And <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! But, no, I, go, go ahead. But, I uh, cast a uh, synaptic static in the in the middle of these three. <laughs> Sebastian like dodges out of the way. He's like, no, no, no! And, <laughs> and uh, I, I attempt to uh, destroy these creatures. What's the saving throw, DC? Uh, it's a uh, nineteen. I cannot succeed. I have a minus four penalty on the saving throw. Uh, uh, so I want to collapse their minds, essentially rendering their minds useless, but their bodies plentiful. I think you could actually, with the range of synaptic static, you could probably hit them all except for like one if you wanted to. Okay. I... I Roll the damage. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bruce must <laughs> feed. Uh, 28, uh, what kind of, psychic? You explode the heads of all of your father's (laughs) prized birds. (laughs) And Bruce lunges forward to eat their carcasses. And that's where we'll end for the night. (laughs) (laughs) This, uh, this was a good idea. (laughs) I'm sorry, Bruce. You're definitely not going to regret this. (laughs) Wait, why do you keep saying that? <laughs> I feel like you're hinting at something. I mean, I mean, this is between you and your dad. You just murdered all of his pets. I, uh... Yep. I must please Bruce. Bruce you feel the is further all... disappointment? Bruce, Bruce is more dad than he'll ever be. No, oh. I... no, no, that's true. It's true. We all know it. I, uh... Thank you for letting me uh, destroy and appease. Bo- and I, I'm collecting bird bits too in yeah. like my bag for later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> They're fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, the last remaining bird, uh, Bruce pounces on it and slays it. Um, and 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 kind of like does that thing where like a cat kind of like gnaws the neck off of the creature. Uh, and with that image. Uh, we will end there. Um, Amazing. Amazing. So good. (laughs) Well, with that, a big thank you to our incredible cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe for playing tonight. (laughs) And a huge thank you to Kyle for all the work he does behind the scenes, managing the stream, chatting with people. Uh, And a huge thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin. Thank you. Um, Awesome staircase battle. Uh, just Amazing. really cool. I love I love the Academy Strongholds. They're always so fun. So thank mm-hmm. you. Um, and in our game tonight, you got to see some incredible assets produced by talented artists. Uh, they have graciously given us permission to use them in our stream games, and you can use them at home too. Uh, we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, some of the virtual tabletops uh, created by um, Josh O, is it? And uh, these ones tonight were uh, by Two Minute Tabletop uh, and Neutral Party. Uh, yeah, so Two Minute Tabletop, uh, that's uh, their work on the staircase. And uh, the Neutral Party is uh, our current facility map. And you'll see some of our player character artwork by uh, Elizabeth Perot. And of course, music by Tabletop Audio. So go out and check out and support them. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dews shirts and merch, including uh, Shadows of Dragonheim, Yes, 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 you know, all the classics, 
Take a look at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an amazing Patreon community supporting us. Uh, if you enjoy the live streams that we do specifically uh, uh, um, and want to chat uh, about uh, all that and want to see more of this, be sure to get over onto our Patreon at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. Really helps us out uh, continuing to make this show possible. And we have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So if you're joining us on Patreon, you can hop onto our Discord and chat with us about all things D&D, all things Drakenheim, uh, all of the secrets and lore and good bits and all of that. And we're all on there. So is Kyle. And uh, yeah, you can come hang out. You can join us, Monty and I, on our monthly writer's rooms where we uh, look at new scripts or sneak peeks of upcoming things. And you can also join us for our Q&As, which we will be getting back to in relatively soon. Yeah. And um, now that we're done with the uh, all of the other stuff, we can get jump back into Q&As. So uh, we take questions from our Patreon community for our Q&As, and sometimes we do homebrew workshops and other such things. So join us on Patreon, join us on Discord, and come hang out. Nice. Um, of course, uh, we do always post new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays on YouTube, so check that out, youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. And be sure to join us not next Tuesday, because people will be elsewhere in the world. But the following Tuesday after that, so in two weeks, we when we record the campaign live on Twitch, you can check us out from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. They go up every Friday. And you can check us out as an audio-only podcast on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time when we decide the fate of Drakenheim. <laughs>